Hi, friends. I'm Emily Lay, and you're listening to The Simplified Podcast. If you're looking for a quiet place where you can filter out the noise and the hustle, this is it. Every week, I invite you to slow down and join me to explore practical ways to organize and automate the complicated parts of life so you can focus on what truly matters most. You guys, we recently launched a brand new collection out into the world. It is our cloth journal collection. And let me tell you, it is stunning. So beautiful, amazing colors. The design is impeccable. It is such a great gift for a friend, for your mom, for yourself, for anybody. I highly recommend you check it out. You can see all of our cloth journals at emilylay.com and make sure you check out the back of each journal for a special individualized message on each. This weekend, I was determined to get my act together. I was so productive. I made a meal plan. I went to Target. I cleared out shelves and closets. I rehung all the photos in the hallway with actual nails instead of command strips. Gracious. And I even put up some new French-inspired artwork that I absolutely love. I ate so whole and healthy, I went to bed early. And yet, at the time I'm recording this episode, my kids have just tested positive for COVID. I swear, you guys, you can do everything right. You can do everything with good intentions. And then sometimes the pieces just don't line up, no matter how hard you try. Twins are fine. I tested them after an exposure and they're asymptomatic, vaccinated, all that. But still, I feel awful that it happens to them. And right now, I hear the mom guilt starting to whisper to me, trying to get in my head. And guys, as you know, mom guilt is strong. I know so many of you can relate to what I'm talking about here, not just with COVID, because I know a fair share of you have had to deal with it too, but I'm talking about the guilt. It's an emotion we're all too familiar with. Have you ever started January with smoothies and supplements only to find yourself famished by two o'clock and reaching for calories that weren't part of your quote eating plan? Did you say something your inner voice knew, just knew that you shouldn't have, but you were so mad that you let the words fly out anyway? Been there. Is there something you've done that chips away at you, that makes you feel like you've lost a little piece of yourself you might not ever get back? Suffice it to say, there's a lot of stuff we feel guilty about doing. Guilt is an emotion that so many of us are familiar with. But did you know that we're actually sort of conditioned to have guilt? Humans have lived together for thousands of years, and guilt is something our bodies have honed to keep us in check with the group, so that we're pulling our weight when it comes to everyone's survival, including our own. Guilt is the thing that says, hey, you need to follow the rules of the group so you can stay in it. You need to be pulling your weight so the groups can survive, including you. Our bodies are very attuned to the rules we make for ourselves. They're really smart in that way. But also, society's rules have evolved, like a lot. Now, instead of just keeping everyone alive, every day we're wading through an Olympic-sized pool of social etiquette. It's become a lot more nuanced to be a human who can navigate the world successfully, at least socially, but our bodies haven't quite caught up. They're still pretty attuned to the fact that, hey, I don't want to be isolated from the group, and that's where guilt enters the equation. Plus, women have that extra special layer of being attuned to the well-being of the group. That's how we're wired, and also that's how we've been socially conditioned to function in the world, that it's our job to take care of everyone. That's why it seems like we have an extra layer of guilt about, you know, everything. But you know what? At one point, at a point at least, guilt just isn't helpful anymore. You can't be all things to all people. And you know what else, you guys? We are so hard on ourselves. And you know what else? We don't have to be. Yes, it is so good to make goals. It's normal to have negative emotions. It's normal to feel disappointed when we break our word to ourselves or someone else. But I think there's something else at play here. As a recovering perfectionist, as someone who's dealt with anxiety for a very long time, my alarm bells always start ringing when I feel that familiar sense of panic. It's that feeling where my heart beats fast, where I want to do everything all at one time, everything in my power to get rid of this feeling. Now, when I'm feeling this way, this is my trigger that says, hey, Emily, maybe we need to slow down for a second. Maybe we need to take a minute and reevaluate what is instead of what you wish it would be. And I'm going to invite you to do the same. I want you to take a step back for a minute so we can think about something together. I know you're trying your best. I know it feels like you're coming up short in so many different areas. 
I know sometimes you feel like this isn't the life I signed up for. I never wanted this to be part of my story. And let me tell you, it's okay to feel that way. I have so much empathy for you right now because I've been there so many times myself. I feel so much compassion for you right now because you're trying so hard. Because you've taken a chance and you failed. Because you're upset and hurt and scared just like any person who's engaged in life would feel. You don't feel these things because you've done something wrong. You feel these things because you're human. You feel scared that there's things out of your control because you're human. You've messed up sometimes because you're human. You are not bad. You are so, so good. And you are so, so loved. I want so much goodness for you. And if I know you're worthy of that kind of love and compassion, I want you to believe that about yourself. And I want you to be able to extend that kind of compassion to yourself too. Over the past few years, I've heard the word resilience tossed around more than I ever have. And here's what I've learned. The people who are most resilient are also fluent in self-compassion. I think that's because self-compassion gives us the capability to not be so brittle. It gives us the ability to flex, to bend in the wind instead of resisting, and then toppling over all at once. Self-compassion isn't something you're just born with. Like many things, you can get better at it the more you practice. And practicing something that'll help you be more kind and gentle and tender with yourself, that is something I can get on board with. The first stop on your way to self-compassion is to stop judging yourself. Many of our negative emotions are tied to the little voice in our head that has a lot to say about what's going on in our days. But here's what I've found. I've found that little voice is so sure of herself sometimes, she leaves no room for me to get past the rigid boxes she wants everything put in. She doesn't give me the room to move around and be curious about something. She's so ready to define things as they are so she can move on to the next thing. But she's not the boss of me. I am. She's a hard voice to turn off sometimes, but the next time you're able to notice she's got some running dialogue about what's going on, just stop. Take a step back and try to observe what's going on. Don't tell yourself how you're feeling. Be curious about it. Allow yourself to ask, am I feeling angry? Is that all I'm feeling right now or is there something underneath it? Why am I feeling this way? Be an observer. Act like a scientist who's trying to test a hypothesis and you'll start to take the emotion and judgment out of it. Notice how you react to different people and situations. Taking inventory of your reaction, kind of like a scientist would, especially if it's something you may be having an outsized reaction to, you might find that the next time you start reacting the same way to that person or situation, your brain will cue the scientist in you. You might think, okay, I'm reacting to my friend being late for our restaurant reservation because my mom was a stickler for lateness growing up. It helps you be mindful. And don't forget, even Ted Lasso told us, best show ever, be curious, not judgmental. And I want a lot more of Ted Lasso in my life, don't you? Number two, don't beat yourself up for your emotions. Accept them, feel them, and be kind to yourself. If you want to learn more about self-compassion after a show today, then you've got to check out the work of Dr. Kristen Neff. She is a self-compassion expert and super accessible too. Dr. Neff says that the best way to counteract self-criticism is to understand it, to have compassion for it, and to replace that criticism with a kinder response. Instead of criticizing yourself, your response might be something like, of course you're scared. Of course you're tired and sad and frustrated. I know you've been trying so hard. I'm so proud of the way you've been trying. Maybe in the morning when you have had some rest, you can grab a cup of coffee and think about how you want to move forward or who might be able to help in this situation. How do you think you'd respond after hearing yourself talk like that? You'd probably be a bit more calm, right? You deserve for someone to talk to you the way a great friend would. And the good news is, you can be that friend for yourself. Here's a good rule of thumb. The moment you feel your blood pressure rising, start to talk to yourself the way your best friend would. What would she say? What would she do for you in that moment? You can talk to yourself the same way. And I think you'll be amazed by how much it impacts you for good. One last thing, I want you to connect with someone else about how you're feeling. We talk about connection a lot on this show, and for good reason. Connection is an instant mood booster. It's what we were put on this earth to do. We're here to help each other realize that we're not alone and that we can get through life together. The same holds true in the middle of our shame spirals. 
Talking to someone else about our hard emotions is another way we can sort of step outside the spiral and get a more objective view about what's going on. Not only is that person going to pick you up, they'll also be able to point out things you may have missed because you were too close to the situation. I always value feedback like that. Sometimes it feels like the hardest person to be kind to is ourselves. It takes a lot of mindfulness to step outside the shame spiral, let alone let ourselves off the hook for something we've done that we wished we hadn't. But as hard as it is to admit sometimes, humans make mistakes. We've all done it and will continue to do it. And as hard as it is to admit, there are going to be hard things that happen that we can't control. But you know what? Even with all that, you deserve kindness, especially from yourself. And don't forget, you're only able to give to others what you're able to give to yourself. So if it feels like you're being self-indulgent to be so kind to yourself, I challenge you to think about that a little differently. Because if you want to be someone who's kind to others, which I think all of us do, then it starts with being kind to you. As we close out this episode today, I'd like to say a blessing for you as we leave this time together and get back into our days. I hope you remember that when you mess up, there is abundant forgiveness for you. I hope you remember that you have the tools to soothe your heart right at your fingertips. And above all, I hope you remember you are so wonderful and lovable just as you are. As always, I like to leave a little tip to help you put what we've talked about today into practice. So here's your task for this week. If you find your blood pressure rising and your negative emotions are rising to the surface, there's something you can do to help yourself feel better. You can give yourself a hug. Now, stay with me here, okay? I know it sounds weird, but it actually helps. That is because your body doesn't know the difference between a hug from someone else or one from you. All it knows is it, that it's being gently embraced. And when that happens, your body releases oxytocin, a hormone that gives you a sense of security. It literally comes into your heart and soothes anxious emotions. The next time you're stressed, give it a try and see how you feel. Thank you for listening to the Simplified Podcast. I hope today's episode gave you a few tools you can use to be a bit more compassionate towards yourself. You can find show notes for this episode at emilylay.com slash podcast, where you can check out links and resources I mentioned here and shop the Simplified brand of planners and products. And don't forget, you can pre-order my new children's book called You're Always Enough and More Than I Hoped For right now, wherever you buy books. One more thing, if you love this show, would you give it a rating and leave a review? That helps more people find out about the Simplified Podcast. Thank you so much for doing that. Until next time, thank you for listening. Bye.